It's great to be a part of a church because that's part of your family. So I want to sing a little bit about the family tonight. We're part of the family that's been born again. We're part of the family whose love knows no end. For Jesus has saved us and made us his own. Now we're part of the family that's on its way home. And sometimes we laugh together Sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs, and sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven, God's family. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Well, I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this song. For we're part of the family, the family of... Sing it with me now. Well, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain and cleansed by His blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this hour. For we're part of the family, the family of God. Oh, what a family. All right, tonight, would you please open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4 tonight, please. I'm going to read a few verses from there and look at another uh, passage a little little bit later. But right now, we'll begin and spend most of our time here in Proverbs chapter number 4. I want to say to all of our graduates a big congratulation uh, to you. I know this is a big step in your life. Even to the three who are graduated from kindergarten, that's a big step in your life. You made it through your first year of school. Kindergartners, only 12 more years, and you graduate high school. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, You've worked hard, and you deserve to be honored, and we want to do that in just a few moments. I looked through some pictures uh, at my sister's house one time, and I saw a picture of myself. I guess I was about this tall or so with my white graduation cap on and my white graduation gown on when I graduated kindergarten. I do not remember that, but I do know, uh, I do have some pictures about that. I do know that I went to kindergarten at the high school. I thought I was so cool. I was riding the bus with the high school kids and uh, in one of the side rooms there we went to kindergarten, but I don't remember um, much about that, but the pictures sure do help me. Graduated from high school 26 years ago this week. I can't believe that. Cookville High School, Cookville, Tennessee. Graduated from college in 1993 from Roan State Community College. Graduated from Atlanta Baptist College 2008. Again, graduated from Atlanta Baptist College 2009. And so I've been where you sat, and I felt the same nerves that you guys feel. And uh, let me tell you, the nerves go away, and real life will be here very, very, very soon. So I want to uh, speak to you about that very very thought. Ah. I know we don't have a whole lot of time. I do want to say a few things. I want, to, I want to challenge tonight, especially our graduates. And, of course, the message I hope will be for all of us, but especially our graduates. Uh, you've finished a certain section of school, and there's still much more learning to do. I've just mentioned uh, about our kindergarten graduates, from Ryan and Lincoln and Kayla. You have at least 12 more years to go of school. And Sophia and Sylvia and Cole, you've completed high school but you still have much learning to do. And to Kyle, graduating college, what a huge accomplishment that is. I know all your parents are proud of you, and I know your friends and family are proud of you. You ought to be proud of yourself, and the church is proud of you as well. But however, you have finished a certain section of schooling, 
uh, whether it be kindergarten or high school or, or college, and, and you probably have taken some kind of test to prove that you're eligible to continue to the next uh, level, and the powers that be from your school have deemed, you, uh, have deemed you ready to complete a certain section, and maybe even you've gotten some kind of uh, certificate or diploma that, uh, that you can hang on your wall, and, and you've been educated to a certain level. But I want to ask you tonight this simple question. Have you gotten wisdom? You graduated, you've got a diploma, you've got probably a tassel you can hang from, if you have a car, your car, uh, your, your, your mirror in your car, but have you gotten any wisdom? Now, the smartest person in the Bible, of course, is Solomon. And Solomon has some advice for us, uh, for us tonight. And I think about our graduates. Um, um, uh, Solomon wrote this text tonight in a time before there were graduation services, a time before there were even final exams, in a time before there was anything like a, a GPA. He's the smartest person to ever live, and, and some of his writings will, will, will find out he don't always follow the wisdom he was given, but he was the wisest man ever, and all the things in life he learned, he learned a very important thing about wisdom. So when I want to ask you please to stand to your feet as I read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 7. Listen closely, please. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Verse 5. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Before I read verse 7, notice that Solomon is, of course, talking to his son, and he's talking about wisdom, and he calls wisdom her. It's interesting because of our graduates, we do have one valedictorian, and she's a her. So obviously, women are smarter than men. Verse 7 is our key verse. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. I want to draw your attention to a, a phrase that was used two times. It's the title of the message tonight. Two times in this text, Solomon says, get wisdom. So the title tonight is this, get wisdom. Lord, we, tonight we do come before you and we do ask you to bless this service. It's a special time for our graduates and the families. I pray, Lord, you'd allow this time to be uh, something that they'll remember. But, Lord, not just because they were in a church service, but because they heard something from the Word of God that will help them in their life to come. And so, Lord, I pray now you'd use the next few moments to speak to our hearts, give us a good service, give us some good time of preaching, and bless now your Word to our hearts. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated, please. I appreciate you standing. I don't have too long to preach. I know we have food to eat in a little while and some other things, so I'll get right into the message, please. I want to tonight give us uh, four thoughts the Lord has shown me from this text here tonight. First of all, in verse number 7, I want to give you this. Think about the significance of wisdom. Solomon tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. And think about graduates, think about all that you have received uh, from your schooling the past 12 years or the past four years or the past one year. You've met some friends, you've learned some facts, you have done countless number of math problems, probably you've all read some books, you've done projects, you've learned your ABCs and your 123s and, and you've learned some stuff that you'll, forgive me parents, but you'll never, ever, ever need that any time in your life. Things like the Pythagorean theorem, you'll never use that. Long division, you'll never, ever use that. Or how to diagram sentences. Why in the world do we learn how to diagram sentences? I have no idea, but you'll never use those things in your life. Unless, of course, you're going to be a math teacher or an English teacher or something like that. But anyways, and you've sat in some classes, especially our, our, our high schoolers and our college guy, you've sat in some very boring lectures. And you wonder how in the world you stayed awake for all those 
uh, lectures and you've gotten a, a lot out of your time in school and we can make a list a mile long of things you've learned and things you've accomplished in your time in school. But, uh, but have you received the most important thing? You've received a diploma, and in the grand scheme of things, it's just really a piece of paper you'll hang on your wall. Got some fancy writing on it, but really in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's just a piece of paper. And maybe you've got a cap and gown when you graduate. And unless you graduate, uh, unless you dress like a graduate for, for trick-or-treating, you'll never use your, uh, your cap and gown ever again. And uh, maybe like I did with my tassel when I graduated high school, hung it from my mirror in my car. I was so cool. I had my tassel hanging uh, in, from the mirror in my 1979 Chevrolet Chevette. Uh, not Chevelle, Chevette, a four-door Chevette. It was terrible. But maybe you'll do that. But you've, you've accomplished many, many things. And you've done many, many things. You've received awards. You've received diploma and all this stuff. But, but, uh, but, but I hope and your parents hope that you received wisdom. Because wisdom, according to Solomon, is the principal thing. The word principal in verse 7 is the Hebrew word reshith. And it means the first or the most important, first in place, time and order. And so Solomon says the most important thing you can have is that of wisdom, uh, the principal thing, the, the first thing, the, the most important first in place, time and order, is that of wisdom. He says wisdom is the principal thing. And I thought about this tonight. Wisdom is so important that Solomon, when he could have anything in the world he could, uh, that, that he could ask for, he asked for wisdom. Uh, in 1 Kings chapter 3, there's a very interesting story. And the story tells us about Solomon. Solomon is uh, on the verge of taking over as king of Israel. And God comes to him and has a question for him. And here's how the story goes, 1 Kings chapter 3. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, listen to me now, here's what God told Solomon. Ask what I shall give thee. Now stop right there. Can you imagine God coming to you personally, and saying to you, ask what I shall give you. Here's God's way of saying, Solomon, what do you want? Solomon, you're going to enter this next phase of your life. You're going to be the king of Israel. So what do you want to get the job done? Now, I'm thinking in my mind, if God was to ask me that, oh, I have a list for him. But Solomon, of all the things he asked for, notice how the story goes. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed mercy, uh, thou, thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child, and know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give, therefore. Solomon's going to answer the question. God says, Solomon, what do you want? Solomon says, okay, Lord, here's what I want. Give, therefore, thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people. And this speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern uh, judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words, lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all of thy days. And if thou wilt walk in, in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did, then I will lengthen thy days. Imagine that. God comes to you. You're going to be the king of Israel. Not just some small little podunk country. You're going to be the king of God's people. And God says, okay, here's a chance for you to get whatever it is you want. 
Now, I agree with what, uh, what God says here to, to Solomon. If I was the king, I would say, okay, Lord, take away my enemies. He didn't ask for that. He said, okay, Lord, I, I would say, okay, Lord, give me more money than I can count. Because, you know, in order to be in charge, you've got to have lots of money. And Solomon didn't do that. And, uh, God, give me long life. Solomon didn't ask for any of those things. I'm sure he'd like to have those things, but Solomon says to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to be the king, and here's what I need. I need wisdom. Of all the things Solomon knew he needed, he knew he needed wisdom. And even though he was the smartest man in the world, he was still humble enough and still, uh, and still uh, at this time, receptive enough to realize that he needed wisdom. Even a dummy know, knows he needs wisdom. But Solomon is the smartest man ever, and he asked God for wisdom. So notice the significance of wisdom. Well, then notice number two, notice the sources of wisdom. If Solomon's the wisest man to ever live, and, uh, and the most important thing we're to have, the principal thing, is that of wisdom, then it must be pretty important that we get some wisdom. And the question is tonight, for number two, the question is this, where does wisdom come from? And I say, well, what an easy question. Wisdom, of course, uh, it comes from our teachers. Yes, yeah, some. Wisdom comes from our textbook. Wisdom comes from the, the research we've done for all those projects we've completed. And wisdom comes from the books that we have read. And wisdom, of course, comes from Google, right? Just type it in, uh, push enter, and there you go. Well, true wisdom comes ultimately from God. James chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given. This verse tells us that wisdom, ultimate wisdom and understanding, it all comes from God. Yes, God uses teachers, and God uses textbooks, and God uses uh, research, and God uses books, but, but wisdom ultimately comes from God. So, how does God give it to us? Well, I see in our text back in, in, uh, back in uh, Proverbs chapter 4, there's two things that God uses to give you and I wisdom. First of all, He uses our parents. Look in verse 1. Solomon says, Hear ye children. It's interesting, he's talking to his son, but yet here, here the example is for all of we children... Hear, ye children, the instruction of a... What's that next word? Father. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding, uh, for I give you good doctrine, forsake not my law, for I was my father's son, tender and, uh, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He's talking about the wisdom here that comes from parents. Now, almost all the book of Proverbs is written the, from the point of view from a dad to a son. But ultimately, it's God the Father speaking wisdom to we who are his children. And I want to say to the graduates tonight, uh, as, as, as weird as it may sound, listen to your parents. My dad gets smarter every day. I, I, I learned things and remember things my dad taught me, and I thought, yeah, right, Dad, like that's going to happen. And just like my dad said, that happened. And I remember the wisdom he gave me, and I think about how my grandparents gave me lots of wisdom. But listen, please, listen to the wisdom of your parents, and here's why. Because your parents... Yes, they're old-fashioned, and yes, they're fuddy-duddies, and yes, they don't want you to have any fun, but your parents are smarter than you are. But you say, I'm a high school graduate, I'm a kindergarten graduate, I'm a college graduate. I know that, but your parents are smarter than you are. They're older than you are. They've done more than you have done. They've made more mistakes than you have made. They know more than you. And God gave you your parents because God knew there's going to come a point in your life when you're going to start making decisions on your own and you're going to need some help. You're going to need some leadership. You're going to need some guidance. And you don't quite have it up here yet to make these decisions. So here's what you do. You say, Mom, Dad, what should I do? Parents have lots of wisdom. God knew that we as especially teenagers would have some dumb ideas. 
So he gave us parents to help us have wisdom. And can I say, you must listen to their wisdom and follow their wisdom and let their help and their leadership and their wisdom help you to make wise decisions for yourself. If you'll listen to the wisdom and advice of your mom and dad, it'll save us a whole lot of trouble. Let me give you some examples. Look in verse 6. Following the wisdom of your mom and dad will preserve you and keep you. Look in verse 10. Following the advice and wisdom from your mom and dad will give you a better life. Look in verse 12. Following the wisdom of your parents will keep you from stumbling. It's very interesting. In verse 3, Solomon's referring to the wisdom of his parents, and he tells us that, they should, that, that you should follow the advice and the wisdom of your parents. And I think about how young people, they make sometimes just terrible mistakes with their life, and they wish they could go back to, to the time when they made this choice all on their own, and they said, man, I wish I would have obeyed and listened and followed the wisdom of my parents. And so Solomon says, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. Graduates, listen. Don't be so smart you can't follow the wisdom of your mom and dad. Wisdom comes from our parents. Number two, look in verse two. Wisdom comes from the Word of God. Look what Solomon says to, uh, look Solomon says to his son. For I give you good doctrine... Forsake ye not my law. In the text, there's several times, and all in chapter number 4 of Proverbs, uh, Solomon refers to the Word of God. In doing so, he's telling his son, Son, listen now, let me tell you, you must follow the, the, the wisdom that comes from the Word of God. In verse number 7, he calls it good doctrine, referring to the teaching of the Word of God. In verse 2, he also calls it my law, referring to the Old Testament law. In verse 4, he calls it my words and my commandments. In verse 5, he calls it the words of my mouth. In verse 10, he calls it my sayings. In verse 20, he says my words and my sayings. So he's referring to, he's referring to the, the teachings and doctrine and scripture found in the word of God. Solomon says, son, I'll help you the best I can, and I'll give you whatever knowledge that I have, and I'll, and I'll give you, and I'll share with you my wisdom, but you got to hear my wisdom and follow my wisdom, and then he says, if, 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 above all that, I give you good doctrine. He says, son, listen to me and, 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 let me, and let me help you and lead you. And then look at the scripture, look at the law, let that be wisdom for you. And I'm sure Solomon's son probably thought the same thing we smart aleck teenage boys thought. Yeah, right, dad. Yeah, sure. Sure, dad. Remember them days? Sure, dad. Yeah, right, mom. But no, listen, graduates, your parents, believe it or not, are smarter than you. Now, their GPA may not be as high. They may not have received awards like you received. They didn't do those things back in our day. Uh, but listen, your parents have wisdom. The Word of God has wisdom. Follow the wisdom from your parents and follow the wisdom from the Word of God. And God speaks to us through the Bible. God gives us plain direction through the Bible. And listen, the Word of God, He shows us His will for us. And, and, and His will will never contradict His Word. You say, well, you know, it's God's will that I do this. It's God's will that I go here. It's God's will that I do this. But if it's against the word of God, then listen, it's not God's will. God's will never contradicts his word. He'll never direct us to something that his word has told us to avoid. God's word will never direct us to somewhere that his words told us not to go. And God's word will never direct us to be with someone that he's told us not to be with. So graduates, you get wisdom from your parents and from the Word of God. So there's a significance of wisdom. There's the sources of wisdom. Notice number three, think about straying from wisdom. What happens when I don't follow the wisdom of my parents? And what happens when I don't follow the wisdom from the Word of God? Think about Solomon here, the smartest man ever. But you see, he didn't always follow his own wisdom. He didn't always follow the wisdom from the Bible, and he didn't always follow the wisdom from his 
uh, from his mom and his dad because, you see, in the times in his life when he made terrible decisions, he went against what his dad would have told him. And he went against what the Word of God would have told him because it was Solomon who had, don't forget, 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's girlfriends. So he had a 1,000 women in his life. Did y'all hear me? Hello? Are we on? He had a thousand women in his life. Not very wise. As much wisdom as you have to have for one woman. Can you imagine a thousand women? And as, I guess, comical as that is, and as sad as that is, the saddest part about that is the fact that the Bible tells us over earlier in the Old Testament that uh, it was these women, these wives and concubines that's turned his heart away from his God and turned his heart towards their gods. It was Solomon who... Yes, the smartest man ever, but when he strayed from the wisdom that he had received, uh, it was there that he made some terrible decisions uh, as king of Israel. And when he didn't follow the wisdom that he had received from his dad David and from the word of God and from God himself, it was then he, divided, he ended up dividing Israel. In the book of First Kings and Second Kings, he had the potential, in my mind, to probably be the best king Israel ever had but he didn't always exercise the wisdom that he had. There's a few results of straying from wisdom we've received. Notice in verse 14, Solomon calls it the path of the wicked. In verse 14, the way of the evil man. In verse 16, done mischief. In verse 16, they cause some to fall. In verse 17, they eat the bread of wickedness. In verse 17, they drink the wine of violence. In verse 19, it's compared to darkness. In verse 19, it's also again, it says that they know not at what they stumble. So when you and I, you graduates, and we who have already graduated, and all of us tonight, when we stray from the wisdom that we've received from our parents and from our Bible and from our God, look at the negative things that happen. Nothing good ever happens to a Christian who strays from the wisdom that he's received. Even to the kindergarten graduates, the high school graduates, the college graduates, listen to the wisdom you've received and stray not from it. Look at the last words in, verse, in chapter 4, verse 27. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. I'll say it again, nothing good ever happens to a Christian who strays from the wisdom he's received. Finally notice what happens when we stick with wisdom. As negatively as Solomon describes the negative effect of failing to follow wisdom, he also describes the positive effects of following after wisdom. Look in verse 6, uh, following wisdom preserves and keeps. In verse 8, following wisdom exalts and brings thee to honor. Look in verse 9, following wisdom is an ornament of grace and gives us a crown of glory. Look in verse 10, following wisdom will cause the years of your life to be many. Look in verse 12, following wisdom will help you to not stumble. In verse 18, following wisdom is as the shining light. In verse 22, following wisdom is life and health to our flesh. Look in verse 26, following wisdom will let all thy ways be established. So tonight if we had a, if we had a, a giant board up here and we could write down the negative effects from not following wisdom and write down the positive effects from, from do following wisdom, I'd say to you that the positive effects are far, out, are far more, uh, more enjoyable and more positive and more blessed than the negative effects from not following wisdom. So, to the graduates, let the wisdom of your parents and the wisdom from the Word of God guide you and help you. And so you can go from this day to the next day, not saying it's going to be easy, not saying there's not going to be any hard times, 
Not saying that it's just going to be, uh, everything's just going to be uh, a bed of roses. Just the opposite, more than likely. But I'll say this, allow the wisdom you've received to lead you and to guide you as you enter this new chapter in your life. Somebody said this, and I'll be done. You can save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of heartache if you live your life and make decisions based on the wisdom that you've been given. So Solomon says, get wisdom. Get wisdom. Stand to your feet, please. I want to say to all the graduates, God bless you. We are so very proud of you. And uh, I want you to please, all of you who are graduates, would you please make your way to the back room back there? Andrew, go with them. And in just a moment, we're going to ask you guys to walk down one at a time. We have something special for you, and we'll do that in just a moment. But I want to, to the rest of us, I want to say this. Some of you, it was a long time ago you graduated. But do you still live your life based on the wisdom that you've been given? You say, well, you know, I've made some mistakes. I've done some crazy things, and we could all say amen to that. We've all done some crazy things, made some mistakes, but there's wisdom your guide. A lot of things could lead us and guide us. The, the ways of the world could lead us and guide us, and that's the wrong way. Our, our own logic, our own thinking, our own ideas sometimes can lead us the wrong way, but can I say to you, the wisdom that comes from God will never lead you down the wrong path. So maybe tonight... You need to come to the altar and pray and say, God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Maybe some need to come down to the altar tonight and pray for our graduates. Maybe some parents need to come and pray for their kids or their grandkids or whatever. But, but, but tonight, has God spoken to you? Wisdom. Of all the things you could have, wisdom is the principal thing. Let's pray. Lord, tonight, I pray we've done uh, your will. And God, we do pray tonight, Lord, for this invitation. I pray, Lord, that you may use this time to allow us to be drawn close to thee. And I pray tonight, God, for those that are here uh, who may not know you as their Savior. I pray, Lord, they come to the point in their life to realize that their sin is going to send them to hell. They must trust Jesus Christ to be their Savior. They must call upon him, confess their sin, turn from their sin, and trust you to be their Savior. God, I pray you may do that tonight if that's the need. But, Lord, please use this time to speak to our hearts. And we're going to be careful to praise you and give you all the glory. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. you please. Would you please have a seat? I'm going to do something special here for all of our graduates. So open that door back there please Andrew. Okay, just a second. We're going to have our graduates walk down and would you please just kind of save your applause for the very end and uh, I want to introduce our graduates tonight. We've got a, a special prize for them. Our first graduate tonight is Ryan Joseph Sims graduating from Creekside Christian Academy, graduating kindergarten, and next year he wants to tackle the first grade. His favorite Bible verse is Psalm 23. He wants to thank his Lord, his Savior, his parents, uh, his grandparents, his family, his pastor, and his teachers. 
Congratulations, Ryan. There you go, bud. Look at there. Put your name on it, okay? Walk down through there. Go in there. Our next graduate is Kayla Ann Marie Smith, graduating from Willow Ridge Academy. Next year, what are you going to do? I'm going to go to the first grade. Her favorite Bible verse is all of them, and she wants to thank her daddy. Here you go, Kayla. Congratulations. Wait, shake my hand first. Got to make it official. There you go. Our next graduate is James Lincoln Strauch, graduating kindergarten from Ola Elementary. Next year, he wants to join every sport and beat it. His favorite Bible verse is Isaiah 41.10. He wants to thank God for giving him a good family. Congratulations, dude. There you go. All right. Go this way. Lincoln. Our next graduate is Sophia Kohelis, valedictorian of Eagles Landing High School. Next year, she's going to go to college at Emory at Oxford. Her favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4.13. She wants to thank the Lord, her church, her parents, and her sister. Congratulations, Sophia. There you go. Walk that way. Our next graduate is Sylvia Elizabeth Garcia, graduating from Vidalia Academy High School. Next year, she's going to go to cosmetology school and save up enough money for law school. Her favorite Bible verse is Jeremiah 29, 11. She wants to thank God for her parents, for always believing in her, and wants to thank the Lord for blessing her life so far. Sylvia Garcia. Congratulations. There you go. Go this way, please. Our next graduate is Cole Allen Scott. Graduated from Locust Grove High School. Next year, he's going to save money for college. He wants to thank God, his parents, Miss Wilkins, my family, Ben Page, and Matthew Grimes. Congratulations, Cole. There you go, sir. Walk this way. Our last graduate tonight is Kyle Jordan Booker, graduating from Bethany College with a Bachelor of Arts degree in social work. Next year, he's going to work for one year and then continue his education by getting his master's degree in social work. His favorite Bible verse is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. He wants to thank God, his family, his church family, and his friends. Congratulations, Kyle. It's awesome, man. Proud of you. Proud of you. Go right there, please. All right, here is the graduating class of 2016. Please give them all a big hand. All right, praise God, praise God. We're going to do this real quick. I want to say a prayer over them, and then they're going to be dismissed, and then I want to, after that, pray for the food we're going to eat over yonder. So right now, you stay seated, okay, and I'm going to pray, and then they're going to be gone. And so bow with me now as I pray, okay?